We continue to preview the 2023 college football season. Our stop today is North Newton, Kansas. We get to visit with A.B. Stokes, who is the head coach of the Bethel Threshers. And, Coach, the last time we visited, we were just talking about you taking over as the lead man. I mean, it was days after you had been announced as the head coach there at Bethel. The program was going the right direction. All you did was keep it going that direction. Nine and one in 2022, you won 90% of your games. Tell us a little bit about year one and, and bring us up to where we are now. Well, you know, uh, year one it was uh, it was different than than any coaching experience that I that I've ever had because you come into a place that you're familiar with and you know some of the uh, you know the athletes that you have and the, you know the student athletes, uh, but then you get there uh, and, and you realize like oh man like I. I, I've got to find find out who I am as a coach. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like uh, uh, we've got to find uh, what, what's going to be good for this program uh, moving forward because, you know, what they had was was great. What was here was great. And it's like, okay, uh, we can't just uh, try to, try to uh, do, do the things that, you know, may not be right for, for us. Uh, for the sake of, of trying to be great, but there were some things that were uh, non-negotiable uh, when you talk about the culture of, of what we had. So uh, it, it was a it was a strange year that really really worked out, man. I think we probably uh, focused more on um, continuing uh, a, a culture, but then finding finding out like okay, where does it go from here? Because I've heard that culture only does three things. It either uh, gets better, it gets stagnant, or it declines. You know what I mean? So, and we definitely didn't want to be in the, the other two two categories of uh, stagnant or, or declining. So it, it was it was just consistent, consistently thinking about, okay, you know, how can we, how can we keep these guys together? How can we keep this uh, culture uh, not not just being what it is, but but growing it and turning it in, in, into something that uh, that we would want as well. So, uh, man, it was a it was a lot. It was a lot. It was fun, but it was a lot. I can tell you, and I only feel that way uh, being in year two now, uh, feeling a, a a complete different way than I did last year around this time. Well, Coach, you have kids on campus now, and I know that's ex exciting as here we are in the month of August, not too far away from the, the season getting underway. Mm -hmm. Among those kids on campus, one person or one of the players has to be a, a good sign for sure. DJ Sears coming back off a fantastic season, mm -hmm. leading the way for the Threshers in that quarterback position last year. He'll be back again in 23. Yeah, yeah. DJ is uh, – it never, it never hurts to have uh, guys like DJ – on your team and definitely uh, on your team with the with experience. So uh, we're very excited. He's DJ's just an just an awesome guy. He, he's a winner. Uh, he's he's a competitor. We were just out there running this morning. I think he he won every he won every sprint this morning within his group, uh, and we ran a lot. So <laughs> I think he won every one of them. But uh, I'm really excited for the quarterback room in general. We we've brought in. Uh, quite a few quarterbacks uh, that we that, that they're all talented, uh, and I think being able to uh, work together uh, that that this this could just be a, a special year. Coach, tell us a little bit more about your offense then, and are you going to continue with that ground game because it's uh, something that you've done well and the, and the program's done well in that area over the years. Let us know of a couple of players that may be a part of that. Yeah, so you know we we have. We're definitely going to continue uh, with the ground game, but we we want to get better. We we've made a conscious effort uh, about trying to get better through the air uh, because I feel you you're going to need it at times. Uh, I mean, it's just great to be balanced. But uh, talking about the ground game, we've got four of our uh, five offensive linemen returning, so I think it'd be crazy not to put a little bit on their shoulders. Um, you know, and guys with a lot of experience, like uh, Ryan Junkemeyer, who's going to be his fifth year. Um, Cole, Cole Herman going into his junior year. Logan Birch going into his junior year. And Ethan Entz going into his junior year. And then it doesn't hurt when the guy who's joining them, Kanan Wade, 
just squatted 600 pounds the other day. So that never hurts as well. So I think when you got when you got some beef up front like that, you got to try to try to run the ball. And and obviously we've got uh, running backs like KJ Christensen and Scott Grider, you know, coming back uh, with with a couple of guys we've brought in. Uh, and then our slots, you know, we still have uh, Mario Quintero, Tucker Smith, Trayvon Madison is back with a couple of new guys uh, to, to help us on the on the end, on the end there at receiver. We are going to miss Braden Francis a lot, um, but we think we we feel like we we've uh, recruited enough to to um, you know hopefully won't not take a a, a huge dip on, on the outside. You've got receivers on the team, but you've got those those running backs that can catch the ball too. But oh, yeah. uh, coach, as we're visiting with you now, Coach A.B. Stokes from Bethel here on Midwest Sportsnet, and I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here as we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond, previewing the 2023 football season. Uh, coach, uh, one of the names that stands out to me as we go to the defensive side of the ball really quickly, Cade Miller is coming back for you, and I'll let you go through your defense. Uh, Miller, one of those players, though, had some solid numbers in yeah. 22. Um, among that, I mean, 16 tackles for loss. He had a strong season. Tell us about your defense. Yeah, well, uh, defense, uh, Cade is definitely going to be one of the leaders uh, on the defensive side of the ball. He's a fifth-year guy as well. Uh, him along with Grant Gotze in the secondary, both of those guys are fifth-year guys. They played a lot of football. Uh, within this conference. Uh, so we're, we're really excited to see what they do. We've got Brendan Sanders coming back uh, on the corner. He was an All-American. I believe he had uh, three inter interceptions that he took back for touchdowns uh, this last year. Um, man, our defense is just it's so amazing. I mean, our, our secondary, we, we bring back uh, Robin Neely, who started some games for us in the secondary. Um, we bring back Denzel Dixon. And uh, Tay Picker, both of them started games. Um, Denzel was a starter previous the, the year before and came and played a lot for us this past year, and along with Tay Picker, who started a bunch of games this last year. And then on the defensive line, uh, we got Jairo Castillo, uh, Doug Grider, both all-conference players. We've got Ernest Ferrier uh, coming back. And then we've got some young guys who, who are going to be stepping up uh, on that defensive line who, who, who are just – they're hungry. They've been waiting in the wings. I say young guys, they're, they're a little older, but they just haven't really had their opportunity. And I say I, those are the guys. I, I love the guys who are patient enough uh, to, to wait it out um, and, and wait their opportunity because I, I just have a lot of faith and confidence in it. Because, you know, uh, when things are tough for them, they're not going to quit because they, they haven't yet. You know, they're going to keep going. So uh, that that's real important. And, and definitely uh, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm ready to, to, to watch that group. It, Coach, it is neat to to see those players waited out, especially when it, it's tough sometimes to find a way to break through. I mean, Bethel's had a strong offense, but it's been complemented by a solid defense as well. And I mean, that's that's a big reason why you go nine and one last season. Oh yeah, I mean the defense. Uh, there's it, no there's no uh, secret that you know the the defense. You know they definitely they they did their job to to keep us in a lot of football games. Uh, but we, we say that it's no them or us. It's offense, defense, special teams, sideline. We are Bethel College. And uh, I love this team because – and th this group and, and this place because it doesn't matter, you know, how many stops uh, they need to get or how many points we, we need to score uh, or, you know, how many times we need to run a special team unit out there or how long we need to – Scream our heads off on the sideline. We're just going to keep on going until somebody tell us to stop. You know what I mean? Coach, you mentioned special teams. Let's stop there for just a moment. Carson Salceda coming back. He had a strong freshman season for you. He did. He did. Yeah, I think he was. Uh, he didn't miss an extra point at all. I think he was perfect in extra points. So uh, he's back, and we brought in a, a freshman kicker uh, and a transfer punter slash kicker as well. So we got three – three people out there, which is good because, you know, sometimes it gets lonely being a kicker in practice. And uh, those, those guys are already over there, um, you know, working on their drills together and and, and just bonding and, and, and having each other's back. So uh, we, we should be we should be OK in the, in the special teams arena, especially when it comes to 
uh, trying to score some points and, and, and change the field position. I like that. It's more than more than just depth. It's about camaraderie there too. So that's that, that is, that's all it's about. That's all it's about. I promise you, man. It, you know, yeah. People, people can say, yeah, you, you can be deep, but if have, if you deep and they don't like each other, you, for us, it'll never work. Well, coach, the season gets underway now, and we are already in the month of August. August twenty sixth is when you all will get started. They're in North Newton taking on Sterling. It's an all-KCAC schedule this year with 12 teams in the league now, two divisions, and you all are in the Kessinger division. But you have some crossover games to get started. Again, August 26th, let's talk about that. Sterling at home, then you go on the road September 2nd, the next Saturday at St. Mary. Uh, crossover games, and then you get a bye week, and everybody gets the bye week at the same time. That's mm -hmm. That works out well for the conference before you get those divisional games. And – Playoff opportunity on the line. Bethel's been on the outside looking in the last two seasons. Coach, you don't have to say anything about it. I will. I. It's been tough to watch that two nine-win season still on the outside looking in. So you have an opportunity now, and you go into the Kessinger division, pick third in the preseason coaches poll. Talk a little bit about your season. Well, I mean, as far as I can get, man, is is to as I can go is probably to the first game because – we're big on we're big on now then next uh here it's actually one of our pillars of what makes the culture what it is is focus on what you got to do now and, and then once once that's over you move on to the next thing so um really everything that happened in the past is gone you know the the, the good and the bad is gone and, you know not getting picked no well, it is what it is you know that we're gonna fight in the shade you just Pick yourself up if it hurts, and you just keep going. And it, it's crazy because it, it, it sounds like coach talk or whatever. But uh, the people that, who, who know me, man, they know I'm I'm dead serious, man. I don't I don't focus on none of that. I, all I focus on is is getting ready for that first one. Uh, we're doing everything we can uh, to to not not embarrass ourselves or the program or this institution or the, these young men's families when we step on the field on the 26th. We want to. We want to be prepared, and we want to give our best effort. I uh, don't know too much about uh, Sterling. Oh, sorry about that. Don't know too much about Sterling right now, um, except the fact, you know, they've got our, our previous offensive coordinator, Reggie Langford, is their offensive coordinator now. Uh, so, you know, that we, we know a little bit about that. Um, uh, but I know, I know this. I know Coach Jackson, he's going to do everything he can to have his men prepared and – you know, the only thing we can do is just, you know, hope hope this is a great game and, and you know, we, we get to go and coach and do do what we love to do. And our guys have a great time doing it. So I know it's boring. It may sound cliche, but that that's that's what it is, man, you know. And, and the minute that I step outside of that and try to be something that I'm not, um, I will fail. Well, coach, I don't want that first, and secondly, uh, I don't, I don't see that happening. But as you mentioned, it's the culture, and and so you stay with that and and be who you all are. That's going to work, Coach A. B. Stokes with Bethel. The uh, the Threshers getting ready for the twenty twenty three season and doing so with momentum coming in year two of the Stokes era. Thank you so much, Coach, for taking some time with us, and and we're going to continue to follow the Threshers this season. Well, please do, man, because uh, I think we got a I think we got a special group. This leadership on this team right now, um, in, in all seriousness, and, and I've talked about it with the with the coaches several times and a couple of the guys. This leadership this year is something like I've never seen in all my years of coaching football. Um, and that's no disrespect to any of the teams that I've ever coached or been a part of. Uh, it, but it is it is meant to uplift all these guys that are here. Uh, the things that they are doing and, and how it's trickling down to our younger kids. And I want to share this story. I want, cause I want, you know, everybody who watched this, I want them to know what's going on at Bethel college. We had a young man get injured yesterday, first day, freshman, first day. And uh, I believe he dealt with some injuries as a senior in high school. So, you know, back to back seasons of getting injured, especially right now at the beginning as a freshman. And he was really, really down. And he wasn't allowed to come to the team meeting because he had to stay in his room. He couldn't move around that well. So 
you know, I just encouraged our guys, hey, make sure you, you guys are checking up on them. You got a brother who's, who's he's not going to be feeling good. Uh, after the meeting, me and another coach, we decide, hey, let's go over here and let's let's check on this young man. He had about 12 or 15 guys in his room praying for him. And that's, that right there, uh, man, it hit me. It hit me deep. And, and that right there, uh, I'm super proud of that more than nine and one in a co-conference championship last year. If we can continue to do stuff like that, and, and that's real, uh, and, and that's the, that's the kind of young men that we want at, at Bethel College. So as long as we keep doing that, uh, I think we're gonna always always have a chance to compete at our best. Coach, those are the stories we like to share. Those are, those are the ones that that we want to. Thank you for taking time to share that with us today. Yes, sir.